good day to my brothers and sisters in Christ. Here, welcome now to the other channel 167, wherein we share the word of God and grow and dwell richly in it. My topic today is freedom in Christ. And our key verse, as we will go further, will be from Galatians 5, 1 to 13. Dear brethren, in New York Harbor stands a huge copper statue, which is about 150 feet high. As we all know, and many of us have even seen it, it is a statue of liberty, a statue of freedom, which proclaims freedom and it is a worldwide symbol of freedom. But we might ask, freedom from what? The idea of liberty, the idea of freedom has taken on a new meaning of its own in the present modern world and hence it is easy to lose track of the context of freedom. Freedom, for, from what and for what? The founding fathers who instituted the Statue of Liberty had a particular oppressor in mind when they called for freedom and that was the British. Dear brethren, the sound of liberty in human years is a powerful tonic for humans. We all want liberty. We all say, I want my space, I want my freedom. But more than 17,000 years earlier, the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Galatians made this great declaration for freedom of a different type. That is the Christian cry for liberty and this cry predates all other calls for freedom. So let us see. Galatians 5 1 says, For freedom Christ has set us free. Stand firm therefore and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. There are two direct emphases in this text. Freedom from, that is from verses 1 to 4 and freedom for verses 5 to 6. So the question for us to ponder today is, what is Christian freedom? Christian freedom is freedom from law. Example, about circumcision, about food, about so many other things. Freedom of justification by the law and if you adhere to that, you will fall from grace. Freedom and grounds to get right and to stay right and what it means for sinners like us to be fully accepted by God and have right standing with him is very important. Paul says, our acceptance by God and right standing with God is one, based on the work of Christ alone and two, accessed and received by faith alone that is staying by faith alone. It is a freedom to be defended. Paul says, stand firm. Freedom is a calling and it should be defended. This is there in verse 13. Freedom from the curse of the law, from the elementary principles of the world. Christ's sacrifice covers our sins and frees us from the guilt of our sins and increasingly from the power of sin also. We need freedom from false teachers and from festivals. Freedom is needed to take advantage of Christ and his work. We need freedom for earning righteousness. Dear brethren, don't fall away from grace if you need and depend on justification by law. I just put in inverted commas, living the Christian life by grace means that we get and stay in the right relationship with God, not 
by things of circumcision and food, but by faith alone. So now we proceed little ahead and we go to freedom for. What is the freedom for? We just discussed freedom from. It is freedom for future hope and a deep confidence and not a thin wish. It is freedom for enjoying God through His Holy Spirit. It is freedom for changing our hearts of stone and to put a heart of flesh. It is freedom for a new desire, for lifelong sanctifying work in us and to become new. It is freedom for us to be adopted as sons and daughters. It is freedom for inheritance of all things of earth and of heaven. It is freedom for receiving God's gift to the full and tracing the gift back to the giver. Jeremiah 31, 32 to 34 says so very well that the freedom for and the freedom from of Christian life can be seen and it is the declaration of the new covenant which Paul has followed. In verse 32, it is freedom from when God says, I will forgive their iniquity and will remember their sins no more. So we are freed from our sins. And verse 33 and 34 tells us freedom for. So God again says, I will put my law within them and I will write it on their heart and I will be their God. No, there will be no need for each to teach his neighbor and brother saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. So very clearly defined freedom for and freedom from. So Christian freedom is for enjoying what we were made for and who we were made for. That is God in Christ. Christian freedom is knowing God for being His and having Him as ours. So as we emphasize once again that through the Spirit we are freed for holiness. Through the Spirit we are freed for a true life. We are freed to be sons and daughters in the happiest family in the universe. We are freed to enjoy the inheritance of everything that God has created. And we are free to enjoy Jesus now and forever. As we go back to Galatians 6, it says, only faith working through love. It is an active faith, a lively faith, a spirit empowering faith, and that this love is a freedom that we have and it is not a burden. In Christ, we have been freed to love, which means third and finally, because I was only speaking about two, freedom with and freedom for. But here it is, the Christian freedom is not only freedom from and Christian freedom is not only freedom for, but also freedom with. So this is the third and the final stage. Let us read Galatians 5.13. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. So Christian freedom is a freedom together and not to move us apart, not to separate us. But it is a freedom that brings us closer and to be rooted in Jesus Christ. To be rooted and to be grounded in His love as stated in Ephesians 3.17. So there is your freedom in Christ and in His finished work, but still you are rooted in Him. It is something like a kite which flies freely, but it is still in the hand of the kite flyer by means of the thread, which in this term we call as the Holy Spirit. Above all, dear brothers and sisters, 
we have the freedom to come to his table with him with honor being faultless being blameless being one of his divine family so finally it is the liberty and the union and as 1 corinthians 9 19 says i end by saying that though i am free from all i have been made myself a servant so my dear brothers and sisters let us enjoy this freedom from this freedom for and this freedom with have a nice day and god bless you all Thank you.